Welcome everybody who's just coming on right now. Um, once everybody's in, in the meeting, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, if you want to put where you're calling in from in the chat, feel free to do so. Um, this is going to be a live Q&A session. So if you have questions too, um, you can also put those in the chat and we'll keep track of those and try to get them all answered. Uh, we'll just give it, you know, maybe 30 seconds, another minute. Uh, just so everybody can get in, get their audio set up, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, well, Again, welcome everybody. Uh, so great to have you all here. This is a webinar put on by the SGAC mentoring program. Uh, we hold about two rounds of the program per year where we match uh, mentees with mentors throughout the space industry across the world. Um, we're really, really happy to have you here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do a couple quick introductions and then we'll get into the questions. So Harriet, do you wanna introduce yourself first? Yeah, sure thing. Hello, everyone. My name is Harriet Brettel, and I'm the co-chair of SGAC. Um, it is fantastic to see so many people here from all around the world uh, joining and uh, very happy to answer any and all of your questions today. Thank you. Thanks. And Davide, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Sure. Thanks a lot. Uh, first of all, thank you to the mentoring program team to organize for organizing this. It's a fantastic initiative. And uh, my name is Davide. I am the SJC Executive Director. I'm calling from Vienna, Austria. That's uh, where I am uh, at the SJC office. And uh, looking forward, of course, to have a nice chat with all of you and answer any question you might have. Thanks. And then I guess the rest of the mentoring team, Shana, Victoria, Monte, do you want to introduce yourselves as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Shana Hume. I'm one of the co-leads for the mentoring program. Uh, we hold this one usually once a session, but we've realized that it's, you know, become a lot of the same information. And you all had so many questions for Davide, Harriet, and everyone else who comes to talk to you. So uh, this semester, we're holding a unique one where it's all Q&A, so we can try to answer as many of those as possible. Uh, thank you guys so much for participating. Hi, everyone. My name is Victoria Dapouillon. I'm living in Alexandria, Virginia, working from home for a year almost uh, from NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Uh, so I'm the other colleague of the HGAC mentoring program. It's been already a year. And yeah, happy to have you on board. And thank you, Katie, Davide, and Hyatt for organizing all this. That's amazing. Hello everyone, my name is Montserrat Rodrigo. I am one of the co-founders and team members of the mentoring program. Uh, I also work for ESA for the Third Admissions Department on the Directorate of Earth Observation. And I'm really happy to, to have you all here today. And I hope you enjoy the webinar. Great, thank you. Um, I guess I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning. Uh, I'm Katie Brinker. I'm one of the uh, mentoring program team members. I'm a PhD student in electrical engineering at Iowa State, and I also work for NASA Goddard as a Pathways intern in the telecommunications branch. So again, really, really great to have you all here. Um, I encourage you all to put questions in the chat. We'll try to get to as many as possible. We have a couple questions here on our list to start with first. So as you start to add questions in the chat, we'll, we'll address some of these other ones first, um, but definitely put your questions in the chat. This, that's what this is for. We want to answer your questions um, and tell you about what you wanna know. So one of our first questions that we have here is how, just a question that we've seen really frequently in these past webinars and it's, you know, how do you join SGAC? You know, are there membership requirements? Where do you start? So let's maybe establish that from the very beginning. I can start and maybe Harriet, then you can uh, share your experience as well, because I want to start by saying my experience first and then how you can join SGAC and uh, 
all the possible activities that you can do together with us. So I started being part of SGC since 2016, honestly. So uh, it's almost uh, five years, almost. Uh, and uh, I remember there was uh, the national point of contact of Italy that was promoting SGC. So mentioning about what we do, who we are and so on. And so thanks to this fantastic opportunity, I said, why not? So how can I start? And she told me, look, you can just go to our vacancy section. So on our website, you can see there is uh, the section called vacancies. And there you can see every month we publish uh, lots of vacancies where you can do lots of different activities together with us. You can be part of uh, teams to organize an event. You can be part of uh, our teams that, you know, from the finance team, from the legal team, from the HR team. You can be really part of lots of different teams within SGC. Uh, but not only in terms of the membership, the membership is free. So if you check out on our website, you just need to log in, you need to create an account and you are a member of SGC. So the real power, let me say, of SGC is also, of course, the network, the family that we are. We are really a magic power that uh, uh, we are all together here to be part of SGC. So again, uh, there are lots of vacancies on our website, but not only. We have also 10 project groups. If you check out on our website, there is a section called project groups that we touch lots of different topics and points. Um, like space medicine, space exploration, space policy, space law. You can check it out there and you can see how to be part of these different project groups and become and be part of uh, this community as well, uh, where you can, uh, you know, touch lots of different topics that you, you might like. So that's it, but Ariet, maybe you have also something more to share about your experience with SGC. Uh, no, I, I think you've covered it perfectly, Davide. Uh, the thing I would say is, is you get out of SGAC what you put in and you can be involved in a whole level of different uh, ways. So if you want to just sign up to be a member on the website, get the news newsletters, take it all in, that's absolutely fine. You can also get more involved, as Davide said, in a whole host of different ways, whether it's uh, attending events, joining project groups, um, but also joining our volunteer team. SGAC relies on fantastic people like our wonderful mentorship team uh, to do all of the things that we do. Um, so uh, yeah, please do check out the website and the links that are being shared in the chat. Um, and uh, yeah, it's great. Great, thank you. And to kind of follow up on that as well, you know, there there is an age limit, right? There's 35 years of age and then you age out and then you become an alumni. Uh, could you all speak a little bit to kind of the difference between being a member, being an alumni member? You know, what happens if you're over 35? Can you still be involved in certain ways? Yeah, sure thing. Happy to take that. Um, so SGAC was founded at an event called Unispace 3, which was a UN event hosted in 1999 with the express objective to support and empower the youth in the space community. Uh, to really have a voice on that international level. So at SGAC's kind of uh, founding mission is to support uh, students and young professionals, which is why we have that age limit hitting up at 35. But as you said, uh, if you age out, you can still be an alumni and we have fantastic alumni managers in SGAC who are working and doing a fantastic job of creating more ways for our alumni network uh, uh, to, to get together, to network and build that community of SGAC members um, who, who might no longer be uh, active members of the organization. Great. And so another question we have here is, you know, how can people find other SGAC members in their, in their local community? Because it is all over the world. Um, so what's the best way to kind of connect with people that may be local to you or even people that aren't local to you. Yeah, I can jump in uh, on this one then, Ariet. You can, add, you can add as many points as you want. So of course on our website, so this is how SGC is structured. So uh, SGC is structured uh, in six regions. So the six regions of the United Nations, so uh, Middle East, Asia Pacific, Africa, Europe, North America, Central America, and South America. And uh, uh, each region is coordinated by two regional coordinators. So you can check out on our website uh, and you can check as well uh, the emails of the regional coordinators uh, that uh, they can support you and that you can reach out uh, depending on the region that you're coming from because they can also redirect you to the so-called NPOCs. So the national point of contact that I was mentioning before. So I became part of SJC thanks to my national point of contact in Italy. So uh, you can also check uh, 
uh, within your country if there is a national point of contact with whom you can reach out to and uh, see what are the local uh, opportunities there uh, within your country or again within your region. As an alternative, really, in the case you really want to understand and you know, in the case you don't find on our website the MPOC or the regional coordinator, you can always reach out to info at spacegeneration.org and here from the office, we will always be able to redirect you to the right person to know uh, what are the different opportunities within SGC. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe just to add to that a little bit, Davide, you're absolutely right. MPOCs, your local national contacts, are, are fantastic at knowing what's happening in your in your own country and connecting you to people locally. I'd also say the project groups are a great, great way to meet people who share your passion on a particular subject. So if you really love space exploration or you really want to learn more about uh, law and policy, uh, there's a whole host of project groups where you can really uh, find people who are sharing those particular passions. Um, and then the other piece about SGAC is, you know, at our events, uh, in the past they've been in person, but obviously we're bringing people together online now, but it's a really fantastic way to meet people who are, who are pursuing their passion for space in, in different ways. And that's one of the things I really love about SGAC. We have, we have lawyers and scientists and engineers and communicators, business people, people exploring space in so many different ways and, and getting to build that community across different aspects of the space sector is, is really exciting. Great, and we kind of touched on this a little bit previously with Harriet, you saying that you get out of SGAC what you put into it. We have a question here in the chat asking, you know, after you do become a member, are there certain expectations? Is there active membership? You know, different organizations and professional societies sometimes have requirements to stay a member, those kind of things. So. Um, can you speak to what that's like for SGAC? Yeah, absolutely. So again, it really depends on what you want to get out of SGAC and no pressure on, on, on whatever way you want to uh, get from SGAC, right? So um, if you're just interested in staying up to date with the organization, you can be a member, you can consume all our content, you can check out our YouTube of all of our talks. Um, and, and that's absolutely fine. That's fantastic, right? Um, and if you want to be more involved as a volunteer with the organization, and again, check out the vacancy page, but we have a whole host of, of team members who are involved in that way. So it really depends on how much you want to take on and working with your team members to figure out what's the right fit for you. Great. Yeah. And, you know, I guess for me too, I the first way I really got involved with SGAC is applying to a vacancy to be a part of the mentorship team. So um, those those can be a great way to get involved speaking from experience. Um, we have another question here in the chat um, from somebody saying that they're a lawyer and a space policy enthusiast. Um, they're asking how they can get engaged with writing and editing articles for SJAC. Sure. Uh, I can take this one out it. Then, of course, you <laughs> as many times as you want. So, uh, now this one is uh, if you're a space lawyer, we have a space law and policy project group. So if you check out on our project groups, uh, there is a specific project group called uh, space law and policy. You can see how to be involved uh, with the space law and policy project group. Uh, there are two co-leads uh, that are Kilian and Juliana and they are doing lots of activities within their project group. There are, for example, uh, there is also, for example, now an action team on lunar governance, uh, or now they're having as well uh, uh, a team inside the space law and policy project group uh, writing articles on uh, uh, providing recommendation on the US space policy point of view. So there are lots of different opportunities, but not only as a space lawyer, I want to say this also from a global perspective, because all the project groups uh, do also lots of different articles, uh, also for conference Conferences, for example, at the IEC or GLEX, or also more technical conferences in which they work together in groups and they apply, they send an abstract to then uh, write an article for these specific conferences. Uh, so again, there are really lots of different opportunities, but the space law and policy is definitely the project group out of your interest. Yeah, and speaking of project groups too, we've had uh, a couple questions regarding that in the chat too. Some people have been saying that you know, they maybe applied for a project group once and they didn't hear back, you know, and they're just kind of asking what's the best way to proceed after that, you know, I, I assume the project group leads are, are really, really busy people. So should they keep, you know, applying and reaching out or, you know, what's the best way to close that gap? 
Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I think Shana answered it perfectly in, in the chat. So obviously we're, we're a volunteer organization. We're run by volunteers. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of the requests and applications that come in. Uh, so please do have patience and uh, reach out again if you haven't got a response. The other thing I'd say on our project groups is we have two fantastic project group coordinators as well who do who help to coordinate the management of the 10 different project groups. So if you aren't hearing back from the particular co-leads, um, you can reach out directly to those project group coordinators, Alessandra and Joshua, um, who can help you uh, find your right place as well. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Just to add on that, secondary yeah, sure. project group coordinators, they're fantastic. But something I've noticed in these Q&As is that a lot of people will reach out to one person and then wait to hear back from them. Because this is such a large organization and there are many project groups and many subgroups within that, if you reach out to one person, there's a chance that you won't. Oh, sorry, Shana, I accidentally tried to admit somebody and I took mute on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> It happens, it happens. A volunteer organization. We learn as we go. Um, but if you just contact one person, maybe they're in the process of leaving this post and having someone else take it over. It's hard to tell how active that one person is. So do try to reach out to everyone relevant. Reach out to your point of contact. Reach out to the project coordinators and reach out to several project groups you would like to work with. There is plenty of active work going on. It's just important that you continue to try to find where that is in the organization. Great, thank you so much, Shana. And another question here regarding project groups. Um, if, if somebody has an idea for a project, maybe it fits into one of the current project groups, maybe it doesn't, what, how do they go about proposing those ideas? Yeah, great question. Um, so as Davide said, we've got 10 project groups at the moment. We uh, brought in two, I think two new project groups in 2019 um, to kind of expand out the different scope of topics that, that SGAC is covering. Um, if you're interested in starting a new project group that isn't covered by one of those topics, those project group coordinators who I mentioned before are the people to go to. They manage the, the consideration of, of new project groups. Um, but I would say have a look at the existing project groups and see if what you're looking for can fit within the realms of one of those existing topics as well. Great. And here, one more question about project groups. Um, if Do you have to be involved in that uh, project group area, like in your profession to work in it? If you, you know, say you're an electrical engineer and you're really interested in life sciences, can can you get involved in that or are you kind of confined to maybe what you do as a career? Not necessarily. I mean, uh, I see Harriet as well doing uh, no. I mean, uh, it's uh, not necessarily. I mean, uh, that's the main purpose of the project group as well. If you have, uh, let me say, a passion on that field and uh, you think that you can really provide valuable uh, uh, inputs to the project group as well, of course, the project group leads are always, uh, we are, they always have the doors open uh, for all the members that would like to be part of the project. Groups. So definitely uh, it's, uh, it's an opportunity, it's an option. Yeah, maybe to reinforce that. So when I first joined SGAC, I got a little bit involved in the space law and policy group. And at the time I was working in a bank. And as Shane has just said in the chat, using SGAC can be a really fantastic way of building experience and learning more about a different area of the space sector uh, to help you build that experience and, and potentially change your career. Great, yeah. And it looks like we have a couple questions coming in about the mentorship program itself and you know what's expected out of mentees what's the uh, structure of the program Shana would you like to talk to that a little bit yeah absolutely I would love to so we don't keep it too formal because to do that would take a lot of effort and frankly exclude a lot of people who aren't able to hit those we spend so many time zones that setting up webinars like this is often the biggest challenge, just finding the right time to do it. So there is no specific structure. Many people in this chat right now are new mentees who have applied, been accepted, but haven't been matched yet. I was working on that this morning. We are working on matching you. This week and next week, we are going through that and trying to make sure that everyone gets one of their top three choices and doing little details along the way. 
After that, we'll do the first introductions between you and your mentors and do some follow-ups with each of you individually in the case that a mentor isn't responsive or needs to back out of the program and a rematch is required. So we will follow up with that separately. Along the way, what we do is we try to schedule about one webinar a month, either teaching you about the project groups of SGAC, teaching you about SGAC itself, just like this one, or another topic like the analog astronaut one that Victoria ran in the past. We also take suggestion on, to suggestions on different webinars that you would like in future. Uh, so along the way we provide that and then we maintain an active Slack workspace where you can interact with everyone, all of the mentors, all of the mentees in the program, and you can ask questions and network there in many different channels of the different topics that you're interested in. Great. And yeah, there's, there was also a question, you know, about what's expected between mentors and mentees, you know, really it's, it kind of depends on the relationship between the mentor and the mentee, you know, you can, we try to match you to based on, you know, what your needs are and what you say in your application. So if you say, I really want to meet with somebody weekly, we try to take that into account too, when we're looking at what, what mentors are available, those kind of things. So um, yeah, we, we are trying to take into consideration all these factors too while we're matching you so that hopefully that relationship is as successful and helpful to you as possible. Um, and as was mentioned in the chat too, we do typically have two rounds of the program, one in the fall, one in the spring. So we're, we're in the middle of the spring round right now. Uh, the fall round um, will probably start end of August, early September kind of time frame. Uh, there's a form that Shana put in the chat too. So if you're interested in being a part of the fall round and want to get like an email notification of when those applications are going to open up and start up or just be reminded about it, fill out that form um, and then we'll have your email and we can let you know about that. Um, so switching back to some of the other questions, uh, we have a question here about becoming the national point of contact for a country. Um, there's a question of if it's necessary to be um, a national of that country or, you know, if you just reside there, is that sufficient to be able to become the national point of contact there? Oh, here you. Yeah. Sorry <laughs> about that. Um, yeah, that, that's a great question. So under the current SGAC statutes and bylaws, you do have to be a citizen of the country that you want to represent. Um, you don't necessarily need to be physically placed there, but you do need to be um, a national of that country. Um, there are vacancies. I want to double check this, but I think we have our MPOC vacancies open at the moment. But so for those countries that we do have um, openings for, please do check out the SGAC vacancy page. Um, and we've got a whole list of countries where we're looking for new uh, representatives for SGAC. And can you speak to, to a little bit about, you know, what are the responsibilities of an MPOC? Um, what, what do they do on kind of like the day to day? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I wish we had some MPOCs to come and um, answer that question. I'll try and, and do that and then hand over to Davide perhaps to, to flesh it out. So it really, one, I think one of the great things about being an MPOC of SGC is it's really up to you in terms of what you want to make of that role. So Ultimately, it means that you are uh, SGAC's representative in your country and the role is to uh, help bring together the space community in your country in whichever way you want to. So we have MPOCs who will um, set up uh, newsletters about events and activities uh, and relevant news uh, for their country or they might set up, um, you know, a WhatsApp group to communicate with members and, and build that community as well. Um, they may organize events, uh, they may collaborate with other partner organizations in that country. It's really about kind of creating that grassroots network and establishing a presence for uh, students, young professionals in the country uh, to build out those opportunities. Davide, is there anything you want to add to that? No, all perfect, all good, Ariad. And I just wanted to mention that also, uh, for example, uh, you know, talking about events, uh, uh, you can, of course, organize your local event in your country, because, for example, uh, you can check it out on our website, but we have uh, local events called SG Country. So it can be SG Italy, SG France, or uh, whatever country uh, it can be. 
and you can organize your local event. So if you want to apply and uh, organize your local event, there is also a section on the website in which you can apply and you can organize your local event within your country. So this is also something that you can consider. Uh, not only, you can also organize webinars. So uh, on the same way as we are doing here today, you can also organize a webinar within your specific country, but not only. So there is also a section on our website in which you can organize your webinar and apply and then the webinar team will consider these options. So there are also these type of opportunities that you can consider. Great, great. And Shana, you said that there was another question in the chat that you wanted to get to. Oh, you're muted, Shana. <laughs> <laughs> there was. I saw it a while back and I wanted to make sure it didn't get passed. Uh, but I just wanted to agree with what you all said. Monse could speak to this after me, but the mentorship program came about because of a local event that happened in Europe and was organized and they had the idea for this program. And that's how this was born, even though uh, you know most of us on this team weren't actually participating in it at the time. So it's amazing how these little ideas can grow inside of the organization and how you're given the resources to make it do so. The question that I wanted to bring up uh, was one person said, if they have a project they want to do, but they don't really know where to get involved. We've talked about who to email, the project group leads. Is there a room for them to pitch their projects within SGAC and see if they can gain members and support? All right, so um, way to pitch projects within SJC, there could be, uh, of course, avenues. It depends which type of project you would like uh, to uh, have involved within SJC. For example, um, there is uh, within the Space Law and Policy Project Group, uh, a project in which there was a team that wanted to talk about, uh, I mentioned this before, uh, on creating recommendations on uh, the lunar governance. So uh, they decided to work all together and create this uh, sort of uh, mini team inside the project group uh, to then pitch their project within SGC. And then this project uh, is under consideration now under the SGC leadership, uh, and uh, we are providing this uh, uh, opportunity again within this specific project group because uh, that's the main purpose of SGC as well, uh, overall in general, because uh, the global network of SGC at the end provides recommendations. So not only through events, but also through specific projects uh, where those recommendations, we bring them at the United Nations here in Vienna. So there are opportunities, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, maybe be part of uh, inside our project group in we, where you can pitch your project and be part with other members of the project group uh, and uh, work on this specific project. Uh, uh, but not only, maybe Ariet, I forgot something more, but I guess that's uh, how I will see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, let's see. There, uh, in that uh, last response, there was also some mention of different events that are going on and upcoming. We have a question here about, you know, what's what's the best way to stay up to date with everything that's happening? You know, there's all these events all over the world, all these different things being organized. You know, how can people make sure that they're not going to miss out on any of these opportunities? Yeah, that's a great question. And you're in luck because we have a fantastic PR and comms team at SGAC who, if you are following us on Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn or checking our website, everything that you need to find about SGAC um, will be posted through all of those channels. The other thing I'd say is you can sign up for SJC newsletters as well via the website, and there you'll be notified about uh, specific opportunities and events that are coming up. Great, great. And I know too, right now, the applications for the 2021 Fusion Forum are open too, and are open until I believe April 26th, I saw. So um, that's an upcoming event too that you all can apply to go to. Um, do you all want to speak a little bit to what Fusion Forum is? Um, I know it's one of the larger events, <laughs> I think, that SGAC does. Yeah, yeah before... I... go first. Uh, so I've got a soft spot for Fusion Forum because it was the first SGAC event that I ever attended. Um, I'd been volunteering with SGAC for about a year and had been emailing all these people and never met them. And Fusion Forum was the first time where I got to uh, meet my SGAC friends in person. Um, and it was thanks to an SGAC scholarship that I was able to attend. So also check out the scholarship page for funding to attend SGAC events. 
Um, it's uh, hosted uh, usually in, in Colorado Springs before the National Space Symposium. And it's a now uh, three day event that brings together about 60 to 70 students, and young professionals with uh, a whole host of uh, panel discussions, working groups, uh, keynote talks, and a number of different networking events uh, to really get to know one, the fantastic peers that you get to meet, uh, but also the industry leaders who come and speak at the event as well. So it's um, a really fantastic uh, opportunity to kind of dive into the SGAC community and, and meet people from, from all different walks of the space sector. Great, great. And yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that is no, it's easy. No, I just wanted to mention that to check out on our website, but as you mentioned, the applications are open right now. And uh, of course, there are also the information there within the SGFF website for whatever question you might have. There is a delegates team there within SGFF that is uh, uh, always happy to answer any type of question you might have. Okay. Great. And there was another question here in the chat, changing gears a little bit about you know, if there isn't an MPOC for your country and there isn't a vacancy for one, you know, is there the opportunity to create a position like that for your country? Or, um, and if so, how would you go about doing that? Yeah, great question. So for every country that's recognized by the UN, we should have either national points of contact or vacancies for national points of contact. So if we're missing something or there's been a bit of a miscommunication where a vacancy isn't posted, uh, please do uh, reach out to uh, myself or David Day and we can connect you to the right team to make sure that, um, that we can fix that. Uh, Harriet and David Day, could I put your emails in the chat for everyone as well? Awesome, thank you. And there's a question here too about um, someone is saying that they're an industrial engineer and they really want to work in the space industry. And but even as in like multi interdisciplinary as the space industry is, they're having kind of a hard time figuring out, you know, where their place is with within a project group or something like that within SJAC. And they were just wondering if anyone has any advice for you know, figuring out the best place for them or finding their niche within SGAC and getting involved. Yeah, so um, in terms of, can, can you, re the question is like how they can uh, uh, bring their project within SGAC or how can they be more involved within the project? Just on this next one. Um, I think it's more so how do they, find a project that they would be interested in? Or how do they find yeah. projects where their expertise may be a good fit? I would say definitely the project groups again. So within their project groups, uh, you see uh, on the links that uh, the mentoring team uh, are providing here, please check it out. There are the project groups uh, and uh, you can see uh, there are lots of topics like, uh, I mean, there are macro topics, but they are touching lots of different mini topics. So. Uh, for example, space exploration, that they, they can touch the topic on the moon or Mars or so on. You can reach out to the leaders of the space exploration project group, and they're always there able to answer. Space law and policy, for example, they do US space policy, lunar governance, also different types of projects. Please reach out to the leaders, and they are able as well to, uh, to provide you all the possible answers you might have. For example, uh, if you're talking about STM, uh, for STM, you can go and you can check that there is the Space Safety and Sustainability Project Group that is touching the topic on the STM. So again, there are lots of projects uh, that all the different project groups are touching. So try to understand which is the one that could fit within your expertise uh, and then reach out to the leaders and they are able then to, uh, to answer you any type of question you might have. Great, and I think we're we're kind of nearing the end of our time. Uh, the rest of the mentoring team, have you seen any other questions in the chat that we'd like to get answered? I know we also want to give a couple minutes uh, to the HR team to talk about some of their upcoming webinars as well. Uh, so, any other questions that we want to hit? I don't think so. I don't. I just think um, a short reminder, as everybody said, hi at Davide, all the mentoring team that just ask questions and reach out and don't hesitate to reach out to anybody that can help. If it's the mentoring team and we don't have the answer, we'll just ask Harriet and Davide to 
the, the, the correct answer. Uh, just really don't hesitate to send emails and send your questions. That's how everything starts. So that's why we organized this, but there will be way more questions, I'm sure. So feel free to reach out. Absolutely. And just to add on to that as well, uh, there's not necessarily, you know, applications where if you join a project group and you say, I want to get involved on a project, they might not have an empty project. There might only be projects that have been running for a long time already. And so at that point, it becomes very common for new people to band together and start a project within that project group. Uh, the project group that I joined, the Space Exploration Project Group, I ended up finding after my first conference, I made some friends at the Fusion Forum, and then they invited me to be part of a project that they were starting. And now we publish every year conference papers on that topic. So it's not necessarily slotting you in to something that pre-exists. Oftentimes it's working with people who are coming in at the same time as you and finding out what all of your expertises can uniquely contribute together. I, I also would like to say uh, in this question about any finance after one becomes a CAC member, as China said before, yes, uh, send emails, ask questions, uh, uh, join events, even if they are online or, or in presence. Uh, and uh, don't hesitate to, to do that because it's a really good way to, to network. As Shana said, uh, this mentoring program was born in one of these events in Vienna some years ago. So uh, you will find people that have your own interest in uh, even in topics that you don't uh, think that uh, there is much interest in the space. So you will find people and of course uh, you will come with ideas so you can start your own pro uh, project groups, your own initiatives uh, within the CAC. So don't hesitate to do that. Great. And um, any other closing thoughts? Um, I know too, is there anyone here from the HR team that wanted to speak to those upcoming webinars? Should be Abraham or you will find people in I don't know if they can unmute. Yeah, I'm seeing both of them here in the participants. Um, Shana, if you could give them speaking abilities, that would be awesome. Should be Hello. Abraham or. Hello. Hi, we can hear you. Yeah, this is Abraham. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining today. And I really appreciate you giving a chance to be able to talk a bit. Um, I would just like to share with everyone that the HR in our efforts to get everybody more involved in education, to understand more the recruitment process, and let people know more how the recruitment process goes. I will get to look at the calls, I will get to select people, maybe interview the selection, and I will even help structure our, you know, our applications to better put us in positions to be able to you know, be more at the edge of selection. We are starting a webinar series, and we surely will be hosting the first one next month. That is um, April 10. And then we are also you know, doing this first one, top line with um, the mentoring team. So definitely, we will invite everyone. I will surely want you to bring all your comments, all your questions. I feel free to reach out to this one because you know we we are more of the pillar of the recruitment for everybody and we want to make sure that this is um, as seamlessly as possible inclusive for everybody. We want to make sure that no matter your ethnic group, no matter where you come from, no matter your gender, you know, you are welcome and you have a chance for any position. So, but you know, the way people apply for some positions usually don't put them at the edge of being selected. And sometimes some people, you know, apply for like four, five positions with the same application at the same time. So we just want to make sure that we can help in these things. 
and we better keep ourselves informed of the activities of the HR. So our first day will be um, April 10, next month. Uh, I'm sure very soon we will all be seeing the, um, the flyers from everywhere on the internet on the SJC platforms. So definitely keep in touch, and then uh, we hope to have everyone on board by next month, and we hope to talk to you and share more with you, our own views and our own process. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Alina, did you have anything you wanted to add? Thank you. Thank you as well. And thank you, Abraham. Uh, I, I think uh, at, at some point I couldn't hear Abraham, but um, yes, we, we are preparing the webinars uh, happening in um, on, on 10th, 10th of April. That's a that's a date we, we aim for, but we'll come up with, with an update on that. And it's definitely we'd like to, um, to work towards improving the way people apply, people are creating their CVs, their motivation letters, and, and so on. And we want to help them, especially get gaining this new insight into how to apply and how to prepare for interviews. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. And thank you again for everybody who attended today. Thank you again too to Harriet and Davide for uh, doing this with us. We really, really appreciate your time. Um, just a note, we did record this, so we will be able to send everybody who registered the recording. Um, and with that, thank you again so much and have a great day.